Today's science experiment has been a year in the making, and I am so glad you're here for it. I'm Brandy, and I'm the mom behind Aunt Bindi's bookshelf. I am here to help you as you help your kids learn and grow. And today we're going to do that by starting a year long science experiment to follow the pumpkin life cycle. What that means for you is that we're going to take 10 minutes today, get this all set up, and then you will have a year worth of science ready to go. So if you keep forgetting to do science or you just don't really love it, you will at least have this to do weekly observations of, and you'll be killing the science game. I am going to put a link in the description to an observation journal that you can print out and have ready to go for your kids so that you really, really will be killing it with science. Let's get into it. Here's what you'll need. A clean, large plastic container with a sealed lid. The lid is super important. You definitely want a lid that seals to keep everything self-contained. Pay attention to the size of the opening in the top because your pumpkin can only be as big as the opening. A pumpkin. Like I said, make sure your pumpkin isn't bigger than the opening of your container. If you choose to do this again next year, you can use a pumpkin from this experiment. How sweet is that? Pumpkin carving tools. You just need the basics here. Don't get crazy, especially because you're going to be using a small pumpkin. It's hard to get super detailed. Some potting soil. Just get a small bag. You don't need a ton. Pumpkin Jack by Will Hubble. All of our science experiments are based on a picture book, and this one is the perfect fit. It tells the story of Pumpkin Jack and his life cycle throughout the year. If you want to be next level fabulous, take out Pumpkin Jack throughout the year as you're doing the experiment, as you're doing the observations, and read the pages that correspond to the season you're in, reminding everyone what's going to happen or is happening. First thing you need to do is carve your little pumpkin. Don't go crazy. It's so small you won't be able to get a ton of details. Do leave the seeds in there so they'll still be around to sprout later. All right, next thing you're going to do, take your potting soil, pour it into your bucket. Four or five inches should be good. You don't need a ton. And then just plop your pumpkin in there. See how this one just fits in there? Slap the lid on and that is it. You are ready for your final step, which is observation. Set this somewhere where you can check it out once a week. Don't worry, it doesn't smell. Trust me, I did it doesn't smell. Um, the only problem would be if it's kind of going to get in the way. So put it somewhere aside and observe it once a week. Again, check out the observation journals. I'll link them in the description. Something to note, your pumpkin might not look like my pumpkin looks because a million different things could happen. The humidity affects things, the temperature, whatever bacteria you have in your soil. If your pumpkin doesn't follow what my pumpkin looks like, what you're about to see in the video, don't worry, it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. You're doing great. Within a week of putting our pumpkin into the uh, terrarium, we had some pretty substantial mold growing on the pumpkin. The mold developed and changed over time, breaking down the pumpkin and changing the color of the pumpkin's skin. As time went on, it kind of looked like nothing was changing within the pumpkin. I was actually getting kind of frustrated. It wasn't breaking down, the mold wasn't changing. It looked like the experiment was gonna be a failure. We were kind of just in a holding pattern. Then, sprouts popped out through the eyes of our jack-o'-lantern. Uh, we couldn't see anything going on the outside, but the seeds were working hard inside our pumpkins, sprouting and growing. If you want to see what it looks like when a seed sprouts, if you want to actually visualize that, I did a whole video on a cool way to sprout seeds so you can actually see it. I'll link that one in the description. When our seeds sprouted, it was still too early to move them into the garden. Where I live, plants can't be moved outside until like early to mid-May. So we just left Jack alone for the sprouts to do their thing in the jar. But the sprouts kept dying, and I was getting frustrated and thinking the experiment was a failure. This is how science works sometimes. So finally, I took some action. I opened the lid for the first time, absolutely no smell, with a plan to pull out some seeds to plant later. Well, the second I touched the pumpkin, it disintegrated. It was like magic. I grabbed a few seeds, transplanted them into their own pot, and left the rest in our terrarium to continue the experiment. The seeds that I transplanted into the pot went crazy. They sprouted and grew like little champs. 
And now that the seeds in the terrarium weren't being held in by the pumpkin and they could actually get down into the soil, they went crazy too. There were actually a lot of seeds in the terrarium, so we had a lot of sprouts. It was a jungle in there. I let the seeds in the terrarium do their thing because it's a self-contained system, so I didn't need to add any water or do any kind of maintenance. It's my favorite kind of plant. I did water the plants in the pot because they're outside of the system and the water in the soil evaporates. They needed to be watered like any other plant. Finally, it was May and it's time to move our pumpkins out into their new home. We planted them in the garden and basically just watched as nature did her thing. Some of the pumpkins did really well, some didn't make it, and that's okay. That's the way nature works. The leaves got bigger every week and eventually the plant formed blossoms and those blossoms changed into pumpkins. They started green and then ripened on the vine until we had ripe pumpkins ready to be carved into jack-o'-lanterns. And that's a year in the life of a pumpkin. Trust me when I tell you I have the blackest thumb known to man. So if I can do it, guarantee you can do it. Set aside a time each week for kids to use their observation journals. Remember, I'll link those in the description to write and draw and just observe what they're seeing, what's changing. If you're looking for more picture book science experiments, remember I do a different one every month, go ahead and subscribe and check out my picture book science playlist for more while you're waiting.